All right, it has been two days since the inaugural Music City Grand Prix took place. First of all, I would like to apologize for not getting this out sooner. Like, I had work yesterday. I was called in from work to work yesterday, and I didn't do it today because I was lazy, to be honest. And, not, and um, So, yeah, thankfully, I'm doing this right now. So, I do apologize for the long wait, but thankfully... It is here, and, it, and it's been two days since that race took place, and at least it gave me time to sink in to what happened to that race. Anyway, what is going on, E-Nation fans? This is the Imperez 48 here. Welcome back to another episode of Racing Topics with Ian Perez. This is the 55th episode, and today we are going to be talking about, of course, the IndyCar races at the streets of Nashville, and boy, oh boy... Where do I begin with this race? Let's just say, where do I begin? So when this race was, so when this race was announced last year, at first, like I had like a mix of emotions, like oh hey cool they're racing out streets of Nashville, but uh, but my other emotion I was like but oh, wait that means we're gonna have less rovers again. Why can't we just race at Nashville Super Speedway? And, um, like, more, why more street courses? Now, I have mixed opinions about it, but regardless, I was still looking forward to it. And, honestly, of course, the fan favorite of the, the, of the circuit was, of course, the bridge. Formula One almost raced at a bridge back in 2008, somewhere around in Australia. I don't remember where in Australia, but I remember that they were about to race have a street race and a, and a bridge is going to be in it, but that never happened. So I think IndyCar became the first racing series to do that. I could be wrong. But anyway, let's talk about this past weekend. All right. So, um, yeah, the um, getting ready for this weekend practice qualifying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A bunch of drivers crashing. And like, yeah, I get it. Like, it's a new circuit. Everyone's going to learn about about the streets of Nashville. And, um, yeah. Like, did anyone else get, like, Baltimore vibes throughout the entire weekend? Or is it just me? Anyway, um, honestly, the, the circuit, it looked like a mix of mainly Toronto and Baltimore. I said I also said to myself that I kind of looked like St. Pete. Not sure why, but I, I was like, "Oh, this is like if St. Petersburg, uh, Toronto, and um, Baltimore had a baby, and a boom, here we go, Nashville's Grand Prix." And Colton Herta was unstoppable throughout the weekend in practice, and I think somebody else was fast in practice. I think it was Dixon. Like, I know I heard of one, one of the practice, practices, and then Colton heard of one to pull along with Alexander Rossi. Normally, I would not really do picks because, number one, I suck at it, and number two, I just don't do picks, really. Um, but, <laughs> but, like, when it was race day, I picked uh, Colton Herta or Alexander Rossi to win this race. Because you know how strong they were the other weekend, especially uh, Colton Herta. But coming into the race, I was, at first, I was, like, nervous because I was thinking about, like, safety, like, oh, like, I was a bit nervous about coming into this race because how the race is going to be. I just hope everyone's okay and all that, like, nobody gets hurt from it. But then, like, but then later on, I was excited because, of course, it's the first race. Like, the marketing at Nashville, Tennessee, and all that, it's amazing. The atmosphere was exciting. Like, I was hoping it was going to be a good race. I remember, like, some people saying, oh, it's going to be a wreck fest. I didn't know what to think of it. I didn't know what to look forward to. Like, of course, it was going to be probably a bit of a mess. But, yeah, let <laughs> just wait on that. All right, so, and then 27 cars 
we're at the race. It's amazing that we have that much cars at an Indy car race outside of the Indy 500. Last time we had that that much cars was like 28 cars, I think. No, I mean besides Las Vegas, 34 cars. We do not talk about that. Like besides having like more than 26 in, you know, in sorry, sorry. Like the last time we had like more than 26 cars at Indy car race outside the Indy 500, and besides Las Vegas was. I think Kentucky 2011 when we had 28 cars. I know like the early parts of DW12 we uh, we had like 26 26 cars and all that. But 27, man, I think the field will be even bigger than next year. Looking forward to it. Um so anyway, we had a clean good start. And then uh, Colton Herta make uh, not Colton Herta. God damn it! Dalton Kellett made some contact with somebody, and he saw the caution was out. Like we had a clean start, and that happened. And then I like, wonder hurt when the why do we keep saying Colton Herta when the Dalton Kellett thing happened? I was like, oh shit, we're gonna have a caution fest, and rightfully so in the first twenty laps. Um, yeah, um, Sebastian Bourdais, Marcus Erickson. Erickson in the air, and then I think Ed Jones took out uh, Scott McLaughlin, and then the parking lot happened. You know what I mean, the parking lot, the restart crash, with VK, Pagano, Jimmy Johnson, Cody Ware, like Takuma Sato, a bunch of drivers were involved in that crash. And I and then Jimmy got uh, dis- disqualified in DNF because they thought they were making repairs on the red flag. From what I heard, they were just looking to the they were looking into the damage and all that, and um, they were. I think Jimmy was gonna help out, but I don't know why they um, were penalized for that. Also, I'm sorry. This is a terrible video. Um, so yeah. So yeah, the first 20 laps was shit. And they got shittier from here on out. More cautions. And then, speaking of which, can we talk about Will Power? I know he's my all-time favorite driver. He is the GOAT. But on Sunday, oh my god, dude. Like, if Penske's day was not good at Watkins Glen, my god. It was assault to the wound to the IndyCar race. And yeah, Will Power was just taking out his teammates. Took out Simon Pagano, caused the parking lot again. Like, that's just like Road America Race 2 when Power was causing crashes. Like, what are you doing, man? You're better than that. Of course, even as a Power fan, I was... Um, well, frustrated is like an understatement. Like, even as a fan, I was, like, more than frustrated about what he was doing. That was just ridiculous. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, Power took out uh, Scott McLaughlin. And a Don Keller was in it. Like, good lord, a lot, of, a lot of stupid crap was happening. And then Pat O'Warder and Alexander Rossi had their incident. I really hope I'm not missing anything else, but... Oh, well. So, yeah, a lot of crashes happening. It was a wreck fest. It was a caution fest. Like, I think that was, like, the first 60-something laps that race had a lot of yellows. And then we had... We did get, like, some green flag runs. And, and when we had those green flag runs, we saw, like, good battles for whatever position, especially for lead when Hurdle was trying to get the lead back. And all that. And speaking of Colton Herta, I don't understand the situation. Like, where did Herta get out of pit road to restart? Like, my main problem was that why do we have three pit lanes on the exit of pit road? That's just making it. That's just made everything so confusing. Personally, I thought he was second. Uh, I think Justin said he was third. But 
uh, in, the, in the team said he, he would have been third. But no, Andy Garcia the fourth. I love Andy Car, but I'm getting tired of their stupidity, bad calls, confusion, all that. It's ridiculous that we have three lanes outside of, outside of pit road. Like, what the hell? Stick with one lane. Like, pick a lane where Herta could restart and stick to it. Why do we have three lanes to begin with? Where did that come from? I don't remember seeing an Indy car with three lanes outside of pit road. Like, when you got a pit road. I don't understand. So, that just made everything look bad. So, yeah. What's a, what's a Music City Grand Prix without the controversy? So, there we go. Woo! Woohoo, right? Um... And then, like, for the remainder of the race... Oh, yeah, also Cody were spun. Like, he... I, I know Cody's... Not the best driver, let's just say. But... He was at 7th in, in the top 10. That was something else. Say what you want about Cody Ware, but at least... Cody was in the top 10. At an IndyCar race. I don't even, I don't even think Jimmy Johnson... Had a chance to be in the top 10 any of the IndyCar races this year. And then remember what I said about the battle between Marcus Erickson and Colton Herta for lead on closing laps? Yeah, of course. That was exciting. Because Herta was trying to fight back. Trying to get the dub. You know how it is. Um, Herta. When Colton Herta not only had the, the shit controversy... Um, like, where IndyCar decided where he'll restart. Um, I'm like, oh, shit. He's, he just lost this race. I thought that was the part that he would lose the race. But then he fought back. And then while he was battling with Marcus Erickson, uh, at one moment, Colton Herta locked up. And that costed him the race. That helped out Erickson. And then on the same corner... Uh, later on, um, Colton Herta crashed into the tire barriers, and that was heartbreaking, honestly. That is like the big... I, I can't remember the last time I had, a, I had a heartbreak outside of Will Power. I really can't remember the last time that has happened. I really feel, feel bad for Colton Herta. He was, the favorite coming in, he was the favorite coming into the race because how he was all weekend long. And then, sadly, Herta wrecked. Hate to see it. Um, I was a bit concerned about his hand, if he was okay. Um, I think he's fine, but mentally, after that crash, he was not. But Dave Burns interviewed Colton Herta, and he took it well. So, Colton Herta has matured. And, of course, he'll learn. He'll rebound to that. But, in my opinion, Colton Herta, driver of the day. Actually, alongside with Marcus Erickson, because Marcus Erickson went from being airborne after getting Sebastian Bourdais to winning the inaugural Music City Grand Prix at the streets of Nashville. I, you want to know something? Like, I had a thought... Like a joke thought. Like, oh, imagine Erickson won that race. And guess what? He actually won that race. In all my years of watching a bunch of motorsports series, I don't think I've seen the most what-the-fuck winner in any form of racing until Sunday. As of the making this video, Marcus Erickson is the most what-the-fuck winner I have ever seen. Like... How the hell did that happen? Hell, like, even Will Power would never win like that. Like, I can't believe it. I still can't believe that happened. I don't... I, I've never seen that shit in IndyCar, NASCAR, Formula One, IMSA. Literally any form of motorsports. I never thought that somebody would have it a fuck-up like Sunday and they come back to win. I've heard of spinning wins, crashing wins, I guess. Like, everybody knows the spinning wins, but to crash the way it was, 
and they come back to win. That's a what the fuck in my book. But that's a good what the fuck because Marcus Erickson, um, whatever call they did to win the race, it worked amazingly. They led laps. They were dominant. I mean, outside of Herta and other drivers, um, I know some others were like leading laps as well. I think outside of Herta, Erickson was doing wonderful as well. Like he never crashed to begin with. So shout out to Marcus Erickson. I win that race in a what the fuck fashion. So yeah, I don't know what else to say. And so this is a, this is a moment you guys have been waiting for. What are my thoughts about the race? It was a bad race, but it is not the number one worst race of of 2021. Here's a reason. Besides those stupid cautions, we had, we, had, we had green flag runs. When we had those green flag runs, we've seen battles for whatever positions, like I mentioned earlier. And that saved, and that saved it from being the worst race of 2021. But it is one of the worst IndyCar races in history. Embarrassing. I don't even think Baltimore was that much of a joke. So, were there any positives? From that foster cluck of a race. Um, number one, the ratings. Um, I think the viewership was 1.212 million views. So, another amazing viewership from Sunday's race. That's a plus. The marketing was a plus. The atmosphere was a plus. Attendance was a plus. But I've heard mixed opinions about like, like the in-person experience. Like, oh, people couldn't see. Um, a lot of people couldn't see. A lot of people had to stand up. And I'm going to get to that point. So those are the, some positives. It is one of the worst city car races ever. But it is not the worst race of 2021. So that's another positive. Um, so... How could we learn from this? How could we make the future National Grand Prix races a less of a joke and more of a, a race? Well, number one, we could change the layout. There were like some parts that were too narrow and like unraceable, unpassable, and just, just a poop fest, honestly. So, I believe they should change the layout. They should have the start-finish line somewhere else. Because wherever that was, wherever that start-finish line was, yeah, that was a terrible idea. I'm happy that on the opening laps, they started somewhere else. You know, that's how any car is. But the start-finish line should be somewhere else, not wherever it was from this weekend. Um, what else? Um, and this is the same, this is the same thing about the changing the layout. When they change, if they ever do change the layout, make sure it's a better, uh, view for the fans so they can see, like, the racing. Again, I've heard some fans couldn't see because, like, the trees were in the way and all that, whatever reason, and some had to stand up for it. So... Yeah, change the layout, move the start finish line somewhere else. They have, remember, this race is on a three year contract. This is their first year, so they have two years left to figure this out. How they can learn from this race and hopefully improve it for the better for next year and the year after that in 2023. So, hopefully, like the future races are better. But Sunday, oh my god, it was a frustrating race. Despite having some green flag runs. And yes, I did say it was not the worst race of 2021. It wasn't good either. Um, I just hope they can learn from this. And hopefully, like, the next two years of the Nashville Street Races could be better. But personally, 
as much as the the marketing for the race is good, I feel like they could have they could have came back to Nashville Super Speedway. Thankfully, no PJ one and all that. Like it, it, it ain't Texas, so yeah. Like it ain't some random ass tracks with PJ one. Like I, Nashville has something like that, but not PJ one. I don't remember what it was, but. A lot of people say, oh, they should have raced at Nashville Super Speedway. I agree. But, like, it is what it is. Let's see how it goes in the future. Let's see the future schedules and all that. But regardless, the the marketing at Nashville and Tennessee in motorsports, mwah, it was sexy. It was, it's beautiful. So, we will see a bunch of racing from years to come over there in Music City. All right, now I got. Now that I got out of the way, I just hope next year's and 2023's race better. What do you guys think about this Foster Club of a weekend? Tell me in the comments below. So that's gonna do it for another video. Um, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Racing Topics with Ian Perez. Comment, like, and subscribe for more. Follow my social accounts. Don't forget to turn on my YouTube notifications for more content um thank you guys so much for Sweet e nation this is the impress 48 signing off and i hope to god i really hope what power wins a race before this year ends goodbye everybody